Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jack Ford. A retired general who has never before run for elected office is looking to become the first woman to be the mayor of New York City. Lori Sutton was the Army's highest ranking psychiatrist and most recently headed the city's Department of Veterans Services under Mayor Bill de Blasio. Now the Brigadier General wants to succeed her old boss when his term is up. General Sutton is running as a Democrat and officially launched her campaign back in November, joining what's shaping up to be a perhaps crowded field in 2021. Here to discuss her candidacy, her career, and stance on the issues, it's our pleasure to welcome General Lori Sutton back to Metro Focus. So nice to have you here again. Thank you, Jeff. Now we have an entirely different field of conversation we for do. you and I to engage in. So I'm going to ask you the, the question that I, I ask for every figure who decides to run for a political office, and that is understanding New York City. People have often referred to it as the toughest job in the country, all right? And, and perhaps one of the most difficult to, to gauge successes in. Right? With that as a preamble, <laughs> why do you want to be mayor? I'll tell you, Jack, I love our city. And I see things that need, need to be turned around. I think that politics as usual has really run its course. And we're seeing that at the national level. We're seeing it here. I firmly believe that as New York City goes, so goes much of our nation. As our nation goes, so, much, so goes much of our world. So I feel a duty to stand up. I'm a non-politician, but the country has invested so much in my leadership, first in those 30 years in the Army, and now these last five years in the city. And I, I'm ready to leave. You've lived in New York City now for six years, the longest time you've been in any one place, given yes. your military career. People understand that. You move around. What was it that drew you here to start with and made you say, this is where I want to finally plant my roots? What I like to tell folks is, you know, I wasn't born here. I got here as soon as I could. I took the <laughs> long way home, 30 years in the Army, right. but my sweetie Lori and I, now my right. wife, we got here six years ago in the middle of the 2013 mayor's race. Mm -hmm. And we had promised each other we were going to come here, stay for three years and not ask any questions. Didn't know about the commissioner role. Didn't know. We, we had a little organization doing brain training around the country, around the world. And we just, within the first few weeks, we noticed that we were starting to speak more rapidly. We were starting to get irritated when people got in our way on the sidewalk. We were starting to walk with a little swagger. And we said, whoa. We're New Yorkers. We're New Yorkers. <laughs> and it's just grown with every, every year and experience since. And so... As someone who deeply loves our city, I want to be part of this campaign, not just to make things better, but let's get Gotham's groove back again. Let's save what do you our mean? city's I've seen soul. you say that before. I want get Gotham's groove back again. What do you mean by that? As I walk around the city, I see a lot of steely faces, folks who are walking past the suffering that's on the sidewalk, and to watch folks just very tentatively um, navigate our city. So we gotta get the swagger back. We've got to uh, understand that there are big problems, there's no doubt. But you know, I'm a psychiatrist, Jack, and so I come at things from a relational perspective. It's all about relationships. That's what's brought me to this point, and that's what will bring me forward. That will characterize my leadership if I'm so fortunate to be elected as mayor. So you declared in November, and, and you're looking at an election that's down the road. So why did you decide that this was the right time for you to, to get all into this? You know, we did assume some risk by announcing so early. Uh, I'm so glad that we did. We've got a two-month scrum now to put points on the board in January and, you know, earn some street cred and respect, and we are well on our way towards doing that. But I feel like... Because I'm not a politician, I don't have a war chest, I'm not a household name, I've got some real work to do. That's why I wear my working boots, Jack. I'm I all noticed that the when city. you came in, I said, you, those, those are working. You can tell the military people, so, these, are, I, these are my working boots. These are my working boots, and I, I want to be your working mayor. Right. We mentioned your extraordinarily successful military command career. Mm -hmm. Understanding that that's your background, what will you say then when, when people come to you and say, look, that, that, that's a great career and something you should be proud of, but you've never been in a, in a political command mm -hmm. role. 
And as you, I'm sure, know, they can be very different. Mm -hmm. So what will you say to that potential voter who says, so why should I be voting for you when you don't have that experience over in this realm? What's the answer sure. to that? Well, you know, I think that's an important question. I was fortunate during those 30 years in the Army to have had experiences, everything from uh, deploying on a peacekeeping tour in the Sinai, Egypt, to being the division psychiatrist for 1st Armored Division in the first Gulf War, to serving on a disaster psychiatry team at the Uniformed Services University, to serving as a White House fellow, 96, 97. And then, of course, my hospital commands and all that followed with brain injuries. So all of that is, I think, a necessary foundation that uniquely qualifies me to lead and address and resolve the issues that are really all around us every day. But it's been these five years, these last five years, as commissioner first of the mayor's office of Veterans Affairs and now this startup. We became the first city in the country to start up our own municipal agency. And what I've learned, Jack, is that this is now, an, it's an incubator. It's the city's leading edge of innovation in, impact. We can take the most vexing challenges facing our city, like homelessness, and by setting up the systems and the partnerships and the policies and programs that work for veterans and their families, it not only brings the entire political spectrum together, but then we can, we can scale those, those innovations for the greater good. And there's issue after issue. You know, veterans' issues are New Yorkers' issues are veterans' issues. So these last five years, I have been able to immerse myself in issues across the entire policy and programmatic space. What would you see as the, the most significant, the priority challenges for you were you to become mayor? Well, certainly, let's start with homelessness. I think it's so important for us to take a systems perspective. Think about this issue maybe as a, as a balloon. Okay, what we do here in the city is impacted by what happens or doesn't happen in Albany. So, for example, these last several uh, years, the effort to bring down the number of folks who are incarcerated at Rikers, well, many of them have serious mentally, mental illness. Well, if there's not the accommodation in terms of increased institutional and treatment and substance misuse beds and treatment programs, and also, when necessary, involuntary treatment. New York State has one of the leading laws, Kendra's Law, and yet the left hand's not talking to the right hand. And so we see what we see all around us, the suffering of the seriously mentally ill, and it affects not only their safety, but the safety of every New Yorker. And the good news is, we can do better. Fountain House, the clubhouse model, was started 75 years ago here in New York City. Over half of their new members are homeless when they get there and have a serious mental illness. And this is a program that I've been working with for the last 12 years. Let's bring it to scale across this city as one part of the strategy. And there are many more peer-to-peer -peer interventions. Uh, you know, we need to bring together our law enforcement, our first responders, and to be able to really get them trained up with the social work and mental health folks who can not, I don't want the cops to be social workers. I want the cops to work with social workers and to be trained together to treat folks with the necessary respect, decorum, dignity, as well as to uh, keep our streets safe. And certainly your background as a psychiatrist and, yes. and the work you've done in hospitals w would lend itself to that. I'm always struck by the other, uh, an other aspect of the homelessness problem here, mm -hmm. and that is the significant number of working homeless. Yes. These are people who, who are not under the cloud of mental illness, but they're out there, they're working, and it seems to underscore the, the issues of uh, you know, living wage, how the economy is, yes. affordable housing. Yes. So what do we do and what do you do? What does General Sutton do as mayor yes. Sutton for that? So here's what I've learned from our experience the fi last five years working with veteran homelessness. Homelessness across the board in the city has gotten worse. The one bright spot is veterans' homelessness. Mm. We've decreased it by 90%. The number of veterans on the street decreased by 97%. And that's by the federal numbers. That's not just us touting numbers. It's the federal numbers. Now, what we've learned is we've learned that you know, every homeless person has a different story, but you can think of them, I think of them in three different categories. There are the uh, enduringly homeless, those who are 
very seriously mentally ill. They need to be in supportive housing. They can go to Fountain House. They can be productive members of our community and out of our subways and off of our su sidewalks. And they have a particular set of needs. And we know what to do. We need to do more of it. Then there are the economically homeless. And these are the ones, as you said, people who are working hard full time, but they just can't make the market rate. So yes, let's give them subsidies to help them take care of their families, but then let's also help them invest in their futures, vocational and educational work to, 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 to improve their career prospects. That's what they want. They're proud. They want to raise their families, but it's tough in this city. The third group is the episodically homeless. These are folks who have a sudden event. Maybe it's a heart attack, they've lost a job, they've gone through a divorce, they were doing just fine, and now they're at risk. We've gotta intervene early and make sure we help them get back on track. Those are the kinds of things that I've learned these last five years and I'm eager to apply to the greater, the greater good. You know, we talked about, if, if you're elected, you'll be first woman mayor of New York City. We also mentioned the first openly gay mayor of New York City. Neither of those things seem to be headlines. Maybe 10 years ago, they would have been sort of flashing lights, but now it's just sort of as part of the description of you and the job. What does that say, do you think, about where we are now and the progress we've made? You know, I have to tell you, um, it's been huge progress. And just as you say those words, it takes me back to when Lori and I moved here. You know, much of my life, I really lived my life in pieces. It was fragmented. I, I couldn't be wholly myself. For much of that time, I didn't really know who I was. The Army's a lot of things, but it's not the best place to really find out, uh, you know, self-discovery. But now here we're in a position, think of it, Lori and I got engaged in 2015, three days after the uh, Supreme Court decision, you're right, it's not even a big deal. We've got a gay man, veteran, who's running for president, and I think it's it's incredibly important to both mark the progress, but to also uh, look for those aspects, those, those traits and, and, and characteristics of leadership that can join us. I don't wanna be known as the first woman mayor or gay mayor. You know, I'm a, I, I'm a lot of things. Yeah, I'm a general, I'm a psychiatrist, I'm gay, I'm, you know, a, a woman, but primarily I think of myself as a leader a roll up your sleeves, <laughs> strap Put on, on your, your boots. boots, get it done leader. Less talk, more action. That's what I'm all about. All right. Well, we'll as I said, we look forward to getting you back in here. We can talk some more about all these issues. It's a big city that has a lot of, of challenges, so we'll get to all of them. General, it's always good to see you. Thank talk you. Soon. You be well.